Hi, in this particular tutorial, we're going to talk about one last set of data sources. We have state-level GIS data websites, as well as something called the nationalatlas.gov. You can look at the title here, it says announcement, the National Atlas will be removed, and it'll be consolidated with the national map. So the map of the tutorial that I just talked about with the nationalmap.gov and the services, they're going to increase their offerings of services to include the things that we're going to look at today. Now, in this one, we can download both the GIS data and connect to something called web mapping services, which are slightly different than what we've connected to with ArcGIS services previously with North Carolina One Map. Like I said before, North Carolina One Map is the consolidated data resource for the state of North Carolina. Other states have GIS services, some better, actually, to be honest with you, not too many much better, a lot of them a lot worse. And I've kind of Googled these before, and these are some of them that I've worked with, but the Department of Environmental Protection for the state of New Jersey has data sets available for download here. It has statewide data layers, as sources of digital data. So these have all the different places that offer GIS data. These have all the different layers that we have. And then we can look at statewide layers. So if I want to click on you know census blocks for 2000, I can highlight it right here. And this is going to be a zip file here. It's 34.1 megs and unzipped it's going to be almost 102 megs. Metadata talks about the actual information about the information. But these are all of your statewide data sets that we have. Ambient stream quality monitoring sites, coastal flooding and 100 year coastal flooding, cross acceptance layers, um, hydrography, um, national heritage grid map. A lot of these from the state of New Jersey. And typically, I like to go to Google and just type in the state download if I know some data sources. And I've put those in Blackboard, and I've put those on our um, Department of Environmental, Earth, and Geospatial Sciences webpage under external links. So you can see those in both pages. And typically, on my Blackboard pages, you'll see an external link that has all of these different pages that you can download from. And here, you would just download this, unzip it, and extract it like we've done before. Uh, here's another one that I used to work with when I worked uh, with the military up in Maine. Uh, this is the Maine Office of GIS Data Catalog. This has municipal units, regional units, uh, school unions, community districts, biological and ecological data, so that you can see a lot of different data sources that we have here that transcend the cultural, demographic, um, biologic, uh, facilities, infrastructure, geologic, geophysical, data sources that we have, in addition to looking at some of this uh, imagery here. And you can see up here, this is Muscle Seed Conservation Areas, School Regional Units. If I highlight on this one here, this is a zip, uh, a zip file that's going to decompress to a shape file. This is a KMZ file, and this KMZ file is open, able to open up in Google Earth and be superimposed on the points, lines, polygons, and typically the imagery that you'll see in Google Earth. And then this one has metadata. So this talks about where we actually got the data from. And metadata just trans trans transcends the descriptive, administrative, and structural information about a data source. As you can imagine, when you write a research paper, you need to put at the end where you got the data. So for something like this, you need to talk about where it is, how recent it is, as in addition to all the math stuff that you can kind of see right here that makes it line up so we can check the spatial integrity of it. So we can download those, unzip those. Another valuable data source is the National Atlas. And typically when I go to the Na National Atlas, I click on Mapping Professionals. Uh, you've already invested in your own desktop mapping system, and I, you can see I've got my GIS, my ArcGIS open up right here. You can see the layer that we had previously downloaded are right here. And you can see my land cover data here. We can see the imagery data that's still connected to the server. Mm -hmm. That I downloaded from North Carolina One Map and then the National Map, and you can see they're superimposed right on top of each other. So what I have here for mapping professionals, I'll click on this here. There's two different ways that I can access this. I've got the national data download and documentation or the web services that I can connect to also. And you can see when I click on these here, I've got agriculture, environment, map reference. If I were to click on something like geology, 
You can see it, it gives me coal fields, the continental divide, earthquakes, elevation, a lot of different things here. Okay, ocean death, and we can look at bathymetry, faults. Um, typically with the earthquake stuff, uh, your seismic hazards, the spatial resolution is going to be on the order of a half mile to a mile or so. So it's going to be relatively poor, but as you can imagine, we're, we're looking at this nationwide scale, which isn't going to be that big of a deal. I can click on government, so voting patterns uh, for 2008 to 2009, federal expenditures, a lot of interesting things here. Uh, political elections, territorial acquisitions, and then some base map information that we can add here, transportation. So these roads, it's going to have roads here, but they're not going to be as good as what you might get for uh, something from the county or the North Carolina Department of Transportation or anything like that. Okay. So I can download these into a zip file and un uncompress those and turn those into GIS data like I've done before. I also have map services that I can look at here. And we're going to, instead of downloading these, we'll just connect to these services also. And these are a different type of services called web map services. I'm going to click on the technical right there. And now, this is the URL to address those. And remember when we had the HTTP and we had to connect to some server at NC One Map? This is the same thing. But it highlights this is web map service. And this is slightly different the way that it, it, that it um, connects to the data. But for us, it's not going to be much different. So for something like geology, I can copy this right here. I'm going to right mouse click, copy, or control C. And I can do the same exact thing here in catalog. Okay, instead of adding ArcGIS server, I'm going to add a WMS server, web map server. And I'm going to cut and paste my services in right here. And it's going to connect. So under geology, I've got a different set of layers here. And I've got magnetic fields. I've got coal fields, everything that I was looking at before. Right, these are earthquakes from 1980, uh, 1568 to 2009. Okay, it asked me, now as you can imagine, I'm not going to have a lot of these on here. But if I were to zoom out a little bit, I will. And as I go out to Western North Carolina, I'll probably uncheck this. Uncheck my fire stations because it takes a long time for us to draw these. I'm connecting to a server over in Raleigh. Okay, we can see a earthquake right up here. And you can see a number of earthquakes that we have right here. Okay. And my dots right here. And then if I right mouse click, I can look at my properties. It gives me the source and the style. And you notice, if I were to click my little I button here, my identify, I can click on this earthquake that occurred right here. It tells me it's geology, earthquakes, web map feature, but it doesn't give me information about this. So the one advantage of downloading these from the website is that you're able to get the attribute information that tells you when this occurred. Okay, what was the depth, what was the magnitude, all the other things that a, a geophysicist might need. So these are pretty good for showing some regular map information, but if we really wanted to delve into these data, we'd probably go back to this website right here under Geologies and Earthquakes and download these. And if you want to really quickly, I'll do that. I can click on Shapefile and do the same exact thing that we did before. Ooh, okay. This is a GZ file. And then I have an application here, but that stands for GunZip. I have an application here called 7-Zip that is able to download those. And I've seen a lot of people work with those. Save target as. I'm going to save it in my temp file. X out of this here. This is called 7-Zip. This is a free saw. This is a free software application that I've worked with before. Let me click on my temp. Let's 
right here. You can see the tar. I'm going to extract it. And I'm just going to call it Q. I've got this earthquake data here, and I'm going to have to extract it again. Now you can see all of the GIS data here that we have. Okay. So this is a gun zip and it's tar, so it's actually compressed tight twice. And I downloaded this from the internet. This is called 7-Zip. I go to the help. It's called 7-Zip. It's a free software that is able to compress and then decompress software okay, or data. They don't work with zip files right here. It looks like they work with the tar files here. This is just another way to do this. Now let me add the earthquakes okay, versus my map service. So I can click on my channel. Here's my EQ. Here are my quakes. Ooh, the following data has missing spatial reference. Okay, it's going to be drawn. And if you notice, the one problem that we have when we work with GIS data and we sometimes get it, when I zoom to my layer, you're going to see this is where it is. Okay. Now, if you notice, this is unprojected, which basically means when I look at the properties under source, it didn't come in with a projection file. So you can see in my bottom right-hand corner here, it's sticking it on. It's assuming it's meters. In reality, it's degrees. So the last thing we'll have to do is declare a projection for this, and then hopefully it will be added on. So one of the challenges when we download data from the internet is that it might not be projected, and we can do this in our data management tools. So I'll click on my toolbox right here, give it a second, it's thinking, still thinking. Well, after I project it, I'm going to just tell it that it's latitude and longitude, and this will be projected right on top of my other data, so now that it can be georeferenced. Since we don't tell what these units are, we're looking at really tiny numbers, even though previously when we added the data, it was in meters. I'm going to click on my data management tools, projections and transformations. This is feature data. Okay. And I'm going to click on define projection. So I'm, I have to tell it my input data set is going to be my quakes, and I'm going to have to tell it it's a geographic projection. Okay. I'll throw my coordinates in. It's geographic. Whoa. I'll probably just zoom to this one right here, zoom to layer. Right here. Maybe do it one more time. This time I'm going to click on quakes. I think the one problem that I might have had is that it was open and I had trouble reconciling the fact that it was open. I was trying to reproject it and display it at the same time. We have the same problem here. Background servers do an exception. Okay. Um, but once I'm able to address this, I think I'm going to put this here. I'm going to reinstall the software. But once we re uh, once we define the projection, these points will be defined. These points will be just superimposed right on top of these points, but they'll have attribute information attached to them. So in this tutorial, we talked about state websites and the national map as another way 